One of the most talked about topics in the yachting industry is sustainability. How can we use innovative technology and new propulsion systems to reduce the overall footprint of super yachts and their entire life cycle? In this episode of Yacht Talk, we focus on the future of sustainable yachting. My guests are Robert Van Tol, who wants to turn the tide in yachting with his Water Revolution Foundation. He's joined by Enrico Della Valentina of the world-leading research institute Marine. He will reveal on this show what's going on in their new zero emissions lab. And last but not least, naval architect Perry Van Osanen, who shares his thoughts on the most efficient yacht of the future. I'm Charlotte Kahn and welcome to Yacht Talk by Heeson. It's a vulnerable world we live in. Our vast oceans, marine life and shores are in danger, which is why we need to act fast. The super yacht industry is taking joint action to turn the tide and set course to a future with zero emissions and a carbon neutral footprint. But how do we get there and what route shall we navigate to reach this goal of sustainable yachting? To get you warmed up, let's first play a round of yes or no. I'm going to introduce three statements and you can only answer yes or no. Pretty simple, right? After each statement, you will have the chance to explain your answer. Ready? Ready. Let's go. Statement number one. The super yacht industry should speed up the process of becoming more sustainable in order to keep up with changing attitudes. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. It's very important and there is pressure out there from the general public, from everyone in fact, industry players, everyone to, to act fast. Absolutely. Yes. And we have a strategic position to take the lead, in fact. Okay. Perry. I think that uh, the, the super industry in general is already under a magnifying glass because it's a bit arguable to some people. So I think especially therefore we should take a, a front runner's role to, uh, to set a good example. Absolutely. Okay, ready for statement number two. Collaboration between shipyards and suppliers is required when trying to achieve sustainable results, but confidentiality can get in the way. Take Robert. Sounds familiar. Okay, <laughs> tell us a bit more about that. What's going on there? Um, well, you, you do see that everyone has, uh, of course, their, their restrictions in terms of communication, uh, reveal of, uh, of custom projects, uh, and in that way also development specifically for companies between supply chains. So there is uh, a barrier, uh, but I think for this important topic, we need to be able to step over that and agree perhaps on a term within contracts that allows for uh, product development, research and development uh, in this important direction. Perry. Um, yes, I, I agree. Um, it is indeed something which gets in the way um, and it should not for such a big topic. Enrico. Yeah, I think the yachting industry is a mature industry and they should consider themselves uh, itself a mature industry. As we can learn from uh, previous and other industries is that they uh, share experiences, especially faults and uh, mistakes. And we have to learn and uh, dare to share also these uh, things uh, with each other. And the yachting industry is now ready. We need each other to make uh, steps forward. Absolutely. Okay, so let's move on to statement number three. In the next two decades, super yachts will become completely emission free. Yes or no? <laughs> the next two decades? Yep. Yes. Okay. Sure about that? Let's make it happen. Okay, fantastic, Perry. I'll have to agree with that. Yeah. Okay. It's going to be a, a, a tough run, but we have to make it happen. Yeah. Enrico. Yes, I agree, although I really like classic and uh, not only in the museum, but I like to see them sailing <laughs> and uh, I hope uh, they will make an exemption. For vintage boats. Absolutely. Now that's a promising start for the show. We'll have plenty of time to discuss these topics later on. But first, let's enjoy the beauty this world has to offer. And the ultimate way to do it is, of course, on board a super yacht. Enjoy.
Yes, it is a beautiful world out there, isn't it? So we need to protect it. Now, instead of sitting back and waiting for legislation to determine the course of this industry, the yachting world has chosen to take action for a sustainable future with Water Revolution Foundation. Now, Robert, you are the executive director of the Water Revolution Foundation. There are still some, some critics out there who think that the super yacht industry is fairly niche and that its clients don't really care about the environment. Do you agree with that statement? Of course I don't, uh, especially because we are such a niche and we have such a an unique and affluent clientele that we are actually in a strategic position to take the extra step and to become more proactive and actually in the lead within the wider maritime sector to not only reduce the environmental impact to uh, ideally zero, but especially to protect uh, the oceans that we need in order to sail and enjoy this yachting lifestyle. Do you feel growing momentum coming from clients themselves about this? Um, there are certain clients, certainly clients out there that, uh, that uh, request, especially with new builds, what is possible, what is the technology available nowadays to have a less Im uh, impact. There are also, of course, clients that spend a lot of uh, their resources on philanthropy. There is even a project that is uh, completely being built around conservation of nature and, and oceans in particular. So those are great examples already, uh, but there's much more possible especially if we work together. Okay, and the Water Revolution Foundation, what is it all about? So Water Revolution Foundation is a non-profit, uh, internationally focused, scientific driven uh, organization that started from within the industry. I like to emphasize that because it came from a point of realization that we too as an industry have a negative environmental impact and we need to take responsibility for that. And it is also beyond the client uh, requests and commissioning of projects that we can do as an industry better uh, in this respect and need to take our responsibility. And it's very important for you, you've mentioned it several times already, that the industry should take the lead on this. Yeah. It can't come from just, you know, legislators or, or whoever. Well, like Perry just uh, also mentioned on, uh, here at the table, it's, um, it comes from a, a sense of public opinion, of uh, regulatory developments that more and more require justification of behavior, justification of environmental impact. And as the yachting industry, we need to be very sensitive to that. And, and therefore, we better take the lead than that others perhaps are going to uh, develop the regulations for us. Um, and in that way, we can set standards and become more of you know, this, this Formula E or the e-racing e for, uh, for the wider maritime sector. If it fits on a yacht, if yachts can be prototypes, then it can work in other maritime industries that have different parameters, that have more uh, economic return on investments requirements, uh, and et cetera. Okay, so your foundation has developed an assessment tool that aims to neutralize the footprint of the super yacht industry. Let's take a look. As the super yacht industry, we have a responsibility to reduce our environmental impact for the planet and to make sure we have a sustainable business for the future. Collective action is being taken through Water Revolution Foundation, the collaborative platform for the industry to join forces to drive sustainability and accelerate change. But before we can improve, we need to be able to measure. Introducing Water Revolution's Yacht Assessment Tool our tool was developed by leading sustainability scientists in collaboration with industry experts and was designed specifically for the super yacht industry, taking into account the entire life cycle of a yacht. It provides feedback on the 10 most important environmental indicators 
empowering decision makers with the information needed to make sustainable choices during the crucial design and build phases, as well when refitting existing yachts. We know we need to do better, and with our yacht assessment tool, we know how we can. Fantastic. Now, uh, your foundation is not only about improving the footprint of the industry, but it's also about taking care of the oceans, isn't it? Tell us a bit more about that. Well, it's uh, very str uh, strictly and strongly connected. We just saw the introduction video of the beautiful Heesens sailing the most pretty uh, environments of the, of, of the world. Uh, that is what the yachting lifestyle is about. And while we cater, or the industry caters for uh, passionate yachtsmen, that would like to explore this beautiful nature. It's very unlogical actually that the lifestyle actually comes at the cost of nature. Um, so in that way we are in, uh, again so connected to the ocean that we need to in, uh, inter uh, let's say identify it as a stakeholder, a very important stakeholder of our industry that needs care, that needs investment, um, so we can also get that return on investment. Uh, from this important, the most crucial natural resource for our industry. What do you think of, of all this, Perry? I mean, this uh, assessment tool, for instance, and... Uh, I'll be very curious to, uh, to see it and to use it when it's, uh, when it's launched, because it's going to be launched soon. Is it? it is launched. It is uh, launched. We're working with partners of the foundation to fine-tune it. So it's the more case studies we can do, the more yeah. smarter uh, and, and uh, complete the tool becomes. But the infrastructure is there and it can be used uh, indeed for yeah. uh, environmental assessment. Very interesting. I think it's interesting because it shows that you need to systemize things when it comes to sustainability in the industry, don't you? You need to create those tools, you need to, to find solutions that everyone will adopt. So you have to come up with, with solutions like, like those. Absolutely. Uh, I remember when uh, Vienna at first uh, in, a, in a conference presented this uh, tool, it was in the first uh, uh, phase of development and it was uh, very abstract and uh, difficult to be understood. But now it's a, a tool which can be used in the uh, daily life decision making and that's very important. So uh, the availability of these tools that can assist in making decisions are essential. And we embrace this initiative and we support it also with some other initiative. We'll tell you later more. Absolutely. Now, of course, one of the leading experts on sustainability in the marine industry is Marin. Now, Enrico, you are the team leader and market coordinator yachts at Marine, one of the most respected research institutes in this industry. As an expert on naval architecture, ship design and hydrodynamics, uh, you were involved in many well-known uh, yacht projects. So what's your personal motivation in this job? What drives you? Well, first of all, I like the, uh, uh, the yachting, I uh, like boats, and uh, uh, that's my driving uh, passion. But then I see that technology and uh, knowledge can assist in improving uh, uh, designs and reducing consumption, fuel consumption, increasing efficiency, and making uh, a vessel smarter, safer, and cleaner, of course. And uh, I think I've found the right place where I can do that. Fantastic. Now, at Marine, you are, together with the industry, uh, currently creating a new infrastructure to measure sustainability in yachting. How does it work exactly? Yes, well, let's give you a couple of examples. Well, at Marine, we use a, a physical model, a big yellow models that are being towed in the facilities. And we make use of other models, like uh, that one, for the aer aerodynamic investigations. It becomes more complicated uh, when you want to think about a model uh, for sustainability. And therefore, we are developing the tools together with the industry. And uh, in particular, we have uh, two initiatives. One is this joint industry project, the uh, Zero, uh, that will help us uh, build and design the uh, Zero Emission Laboratory together with the industry. And uh, the second initiative is the atmosphere, is autoclave where we can control gases in a several form, different temperature and pressure, and then we can make investigations because uh, it's nice to hear that uh, hydrogen is going to be one of the potential energy carriers of the future, but uh, it's not on a static uh, uh, element like a house, it's on a moving uh, vessel. Marine has recently invested in a new zero emissions lab. Why and what will it do? 
Hmm. Very good question. Let me introduce an interesting uh, 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 and important word is the TRL, Technical Readiness uh, Level. It's a way to measure how technology is uh, available and uh, uh, um, uh, accessible. The, there are nine levels. The first level is the discovery which is often done at uh, university level or by inventors. And uh, level nine is the distribution. So there is a, a, a production and this uh, technology can be sold. There are several levels in between and not all the energy carrier that can contribute to the zero emission are at the same uh, 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 technology readiness uh, uh, level. So at Maring with this laboratory, we want to bring from one to nine the uh, uh, readiness level of this energy carrier. Furthermore, is the integration that it's uh, very important. Uh, Perry he selects uh, for uh, his design uh, the right elements and the right engine, uh, but he needs to trust in an independent institution like Maring that these systems are doing what they are supposed to do. And further, other tools uh, to assist uh, uh, Robert in, uh, in his uh, tool uh, to make decisions of what are, what are the energy carriers that we need. There's not one solution that is valid for all. The emphasis in the yachting industry is very much on hydrogen as an alternative fuel source, of course, but it's not the only one, is it? There are others out there. It's indeed uh, an interesting question. There are many other options and we like to call hydrogen uh, one of the options and we focus on the energy carriers. It's an interesting uh, description because indeed they are carrying energy and there are several ways of carrying energy, including sales. Hydrogen, is it the solution to all the evils of the industry, Robert? <laughs> Well, it certainly has the, all the features uh, uh, that looks very promising for being the, 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 uh, resor uh, the source of energy, uh, not only for propulsion, but especially in case of yachts, also for hotel load. And that's very important to not only focus on the propulsion, but also on the total energy need of, of the vessel. Probably worth pointing out the fact that there are still great challenges when it comes to hydrogen. And uh, recently I learned that there are different types. Of course, you've got the green type, that's the choice you're trying to produce from the boats, but you also at the moment have lots of uh, grey or blue hydrogen and it's not so clean, is it? No. It, 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 it all depends how you make it, indeed. And, uh, and you can do that, if you do that with, uh, with coal, for example, then you're as dirty uh, as you are at the moment. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's very important also to act at a European level, for example, uh, uh, a global uh, uh, level as well, but uh, let's focus on European level. Uh, at Maring, we try to be the uh, uh, referee of what is uh, going on in, uh, uh, in, uh, in Brussels, because there are several lobbies that are trying to pull towards their uh, uh, energy carrier uh, the future. And it's important to realize that indeed, as you said, if it's produced in a, a, a not clean way, it doesn't make much sense. So we need to look at uh, the global picture and uh, uh, make standards that are respected by everyone. Absolutely. Perry, the yacht building industry has been seen perhaps as somewhat conservative. So is it ready to adopt more innovative technologies to make it more sustainable? Um, it, it is always difficult if you introduce something new to the market to, to get it accepted. Um, I'm not sure if it's conservatism or if it's um, being careful. Um, maybe it's the same thing. Um, but it is, it is very difficult indeed. Yeah. And you can only get there with patience um, and, uh, and perseverance. It's a very dynamic uh, uh, situation because from uh, the first line that you draw on paper, Perry, and then uh, the yachts are built by Hazen, it takes about two years, right? Three years so sometimes. Two, yeah. three years. Uh, from the moment you take a decision to the execution and operation of the vessel, there are three years in between. And it's such a dynamic evolution of these energy carriers that, for example, at Marin, we are developing a database, a dynamic database, that is based on information that are available at the moment and price regulation can change the game and the decision that you took three years before uh, might have brought you to a different uh, solution. So we have to realize that hydrogen is the most promising, uh, but it's evolving. Now, one of the most significant steps to reduce fuel consumption and emissions is to make yacht design more efficient. And Van Osanen Naval Architects know just how to do it. Now, Perry, 
the name Van O'Sannon really is uh, quite a big thing in the yachting world. You are continuing the life work of your father, uh, Peter, who worked at Marine. Uh, when you were growing up, was there a lot of talk about hull designs at the kitchen table? Um, not so much at the kitchen table. Um, no, in, indeed, I did grow up with it. And um, indeed, I remember that I spent quite some weekends in the, in the towing tank where Enrico now works. Uh, my father was testing another America's Cup yacht or, or something else. So it was hard to, to get away from it, absolutely. So a big sort of family affair and you've decided to, to pursue in this, in this direction. So it was your vocation somehow, personally, I imagine. Um, I have tried to deny it for a while. Uh, there's a certain age where you try to be a bit rebellious. A bit te uh, of teenage rebellion, yeah. Yeah, but in the end I did have to give in and say, yeah, I will study the naval architecture. Okay. Uh, and after that it was easily decided to, to, to start to work together with, with, uh, with my father. Yeah. Okay, so you are in the business of making uh, yacht designs more efficient. How do you stay ahead of the game? Uh, research and development. Uh, we we um, we've dedicated our internal capacity about 20, about 25 percent of that purely to our own initiated R&D. Um, we have a dedicated group of people working on uh, on CFD, computational fluid dynamics, which is the sim simulating how the water behaves uh, around the hull. And I think we have some of the smartest people in the industry do, doing that and just looking at new solutions. Uh, like hydrofoils, like new hull designs, uh, all sorts of things. Now, Van Ossanen and Hissen have a strong partnership in creating super efficient hull forms. Uh, Peter van der Zanden, General Manager of Design and Development at Hissen, shares his insights on the sustainable super yacht. My name is uh, Peter van der Zanden. I'm General Manager of Design and Development at Hissen. I'm responsible for the design and the engineering of all the yachts. Uh, I was born and raised on an uh, inland uh, waterway vessel. Uh, that's where my passion uh, for boats came from. The best way to improve the fuel economy uh, is always uh, laying in the fact that you have to reduce your resistance of your ships. The, the lower the resistance of the yards are, the lower the required power you need to install for the same speed. That's why we at Hazen are always uh, focused on optimizing our hull forms and uh, developing uh, new hull designs, which together with our uh, traditional aluminium lightweight construction gives the best effect. To give you an idea about uh, fuel efficiency of steel yards compared to uh, aluminium yards, you can easily gain 20 to 30 percent. He's not only follows the latest emission uh, regulations like the tier 3, but also try to be ahead uh, of them. Uh, for instance, we are now building uh, an aluminium yacht under 500 cross tonnage, where the regulations just come into force uh, by key layings uh, in 2021, while we will deliver one already in spring next year. Five years ago, we started to, uh, to design the, the first hybrid yacht, especially the combination of a hybrid with uh, aluminium round built uh, hull form is unique. To my opinion, hybrid is a step forward uh, for sustainability, but it's not the ultimate solution. On the other hand, it's of course very important that we uh, gain knowledge and experience with this uh, hybrid systems that we already prepared for the future when other electric technologies uh, become on the market. Uh, hydrogen will definitely be the future as uh, there you are really uh, sustainable as the emissions are dropped down to zero. As long as the electricity is produced in a sustainable way, you have a zero emission cycle. We just started the first uh, studies for a hydrogen yacht, so when the fuel cell technology becomes available for the super yachts, 50 meters and above, we are ready. Now, Perry, would you say that hull efficiency is somewhat overlooked in the industry to make it more sustainable? Yes, absolutely. Um, if you look at the last uh, one or two decades, the developments that have been in, uh, in hull design, um, just purely in reducing the resistance, um, it, it's been about, I, th I think if we look at our own designs, it's been about 20 or 30% more efficient. 
Um, and if you look at what's around in the market and still being built, that is that can sometimes be 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 quite old-fashioned still. So not really making use of the latest developments. And why do you think that is? Um, the, we often hear that um, uh, most yards are um, like floating apartments, so they don't do a lot of miles, so it's not very relevant to look at the hull shape to minimize resistance. Um, we also hear that, that uh, there's a lot of skepticism on what can be done. Um, there's the conservatism again. Um, but it will, it will take um, uh, some more time before everybody gets, gets um, um, fully into that, I think. But well, if I can add something to that, I think there's also the, um, the real incentive of efficiency uh, may not always be there. So I think if we can develop altogether a way to address efficiency and to reward also choices of better or increased efficiency, to better reward that will change the way is being looked at these choices. And if we help, uh, let's say, as an industry to embrace the benefits and, re and drive rewards and develop them actually to really embrace those choices and maybe even identify them uh, in a rating system or an index uh, and Enrico is looking at me because we are actually working on one so um, that, that will really help to have this extra argument of maybe uh, if efficiency or even cost saving is not an argument then we can drive in that way those developments to reward them by a certain label or category where we can put them in. I agree on that and uh, not always the economical uh, benefits uh, are of interest for mm. uh, people looking at uh, a yacht or owning a yacht but there are other type of rewards that they could uh, uh, achieve and get uh, as uh, Robert uh, mentioned. In Canada for example at the moment uh, you get a reduced harbour fee if you enter in the harbour with a, a vessel which doesn't emit uh, too much noise, underwater noise. Yeah. So this is just an example of reward yeah. and again it's economical but could be also in the image and probably the image of people looking at you uh, is a more uh, important factor. Yeah. Okay. Now, Perry, you came with a model of a boat. What can you tell us about it? It's not a yacht, but it's a, it's a, it's a cool boat nonetheless. Uh, now, what I took was a model of, uh, of the RPA-8, which is a patrol boat uh, sailing in the, in the port of Rotterdam. And um, it, it features our, our fast displacement hull and, um, and the hull vane, which is the fixed hydrofoil in the, in the back. Um, and I, I took it uh, because this was um, um, the project to build and design this boat was awarded on the basis of a public tender. And the criteria for, for winning the tender was based on the full life cycle analysis of the project. So it was not just uh, the investment, it was not the speed or the, or the power, but it was really it was the, full, uh, the full scope of the project over the full lifetime. And I think indeed, and that also matches with, with what uh, you two just said, that you really need to look at a benefit, at a reward for the full uh, life cycle of a project rather than just the, the moment at which you decide to order it. If I recall correctly, this one had also a very low wash. So Correct. Not making a there, were, wave around. there was a very strict uh, criterion for the for the height of the waves that were left behind. Um, there was a, a, a maximum value of I think it was 20 centimeters um, at a certain speed. And indeed, it was it was tested by Marin, and uh, I think Marin calculated that it that this hull forming combination with the hull vane saved the operator uh, 50,000 liters of fuel per year. I think that's a very interesting point. To, cause of course, you know, sustainability is very much about protecting the environment, but there are cost benefits as well, and we need it because we need to become more, more efficient, especially when it comes to uh, the budget of uh, municipalities or towns or, or governments. That helps in, in that way too, doesn't it? Absolutely, absolutely. And, and the cool thing about working uh, on improving efficiency is that you really get into a win-win situation. So once you've, you've reduced your hull resistance, you can reduce your main engines and your propellers get more efficient, the noise levels go down. So it really it, it cascades through the whole design in a positive way. So it's, it's, it's not just for the sustainability, it's also for the improving the entire product. Okay, so one of your latest innovations is foil assist. Um, let's take a look at a video and maybe you can describe what's going on. I mean, what are we seeing here? 
Yeah, foiler cyst is um, it's like the hull vein. It's uh, it's a static hydrofoil uh, where the hull vein is aimed at uh, boats at displacement to semi-displacement speeds. The foiler cyst is aimed at planing boats, uh, as you can see here. So it's um, for yachts. You think of small yachts or ribs, tenders. Um, it's a fixed hydrofoil mounted under the hull, and it uh, it greatly reduces the uh, the slamming and the vertical motions. Um, but it also it improves your top speed. It reduces your hull resistance. Um, and then if you can in increase your speed, you can also reduce your power and thereby uh, reduce emissions um, um, and become more sustainable in the end. Well, it's really, really, really interesting indeed. So um, another interesting project is the Yacht of 2030. What is this all about? Uh, the Art of 2030 is one of our in-house R&D projects um, and indeed we, we uh, that's also how our company is known, we, looked at, we look at our hull efficiency and, and, and minimizing the uh, propulsion power. But this was a project purely aimed at the hotel loads, so uh, how much power is used by all the systems on board. And we thought, well, we know uh, there will be legislation probably in the future that we all have to reduce uh, the emissions. So let's take a step ahead and see what we can already achieve. So we took a benchmark vessel from, uh, from 2007, 2008, uh, of which we have the full uh, design data. And we, we compared that with what we can do these days. With ready to go technology, so we didn't invent anything, but just by uh, choosing for each option the most uh, efficient one. Um, so for, for example, regarding the air conditioning, we use waste heat recovery. Um, and if you add up everything that you can do now, you can already reduce the emissions by 40 to 50 percent. Now you don't even have to invent anything new, um, and you can build this ship tomorrow, as a matter of speaking. Um, and I think that that is really positive. Um, but th then the question is, why is it not done yet? Why? <laughs> why isn't it done yet? What are the challenges, the hurdles? Why is it not happening? Um, it, good, it's a good question. Um, it, it can be done. Um, I think that the, the, um, um, maybe it's not so well known. Maybe there's not a much uh, pool from the market uh, to do so. Um, so a general lack of awareness, really? Perhaps, yeah. yeah. How can well. we address it? How can we address awareness? <laughs> I know. <laughs> You have okay. an idea. Because that's going to be our next major deliverable as foundation. We're going to uh, launch a database of sustainable solutions, like Perry said. We're going to collect them all verify whether it's really a sustainable uh, development and disseminate them all. Tell everyone, tell the whole industry. So awareness cannot be a reason why this is not being embraced. Because it's of course fairly ridiculous that there's technology developed and there's money invested. So from a sustainable point of view, it's much m uh, better to share that knowledge, to make that available, to make that a renewal benchmark and set, let's say, a minimum standard like, okay, this is possible, so let's now spend any R&D budget that becomes available to develop this further. But this is now the starting point. And I think then we really optimize the, the, the budgets that sometimes are very uh, generously being provided by customers to our industry to really develop something custom, but also innovative to take that really to the next step. So that's going to be our next launch. Well, good luck with that. So we have nearly reached the end of our show. To immortalize your appearance on Yacht Talk, I would like you to answer one last question, write it down in our logbook and sign it. So the question is, when it comes to yachting, what would be your wish for future generations? We'll start with you, Robert, if mm. that's okay. Okay, thank you. My wish for future generations um, would be to not only enjoy what we currently still have, but actually that it is flourishing again like it used to, maybe even more than ever before. Because if we really can manage to make yachting not coming at the cost of the ecosystem, but making part of the ecosystem, then it will be even very logical to see yachts in very uh, blooming uh, and flourishing marine areas where the next generation then can enjoy that. 
Fantastic. So now I need to write that down, I guess. Absolutely, it's quite a long one. <laughs> I will get started. Let's keep it to a sentence or two, but it's a very interesting point, isn't it? Okay. That we should be more ambitious and not just, you know, repair the damage, but also yeah. provide the, the right environment for things to thrive. Yeah, for the planet to thrive. You stole my answer, by the way. He did. <laughs> no, you did. Oh, me? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. And don't worry, guys, it's not the 2015 Paris Agreement, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Thank hey, you, Robert. It's me. Who's next? Perry, what's your wish for future generations? Um, I can't write down the same thing, can I? Um, <laughs> nope. <laughs> then you can write it differently. I can write it differently. I think that if we, um, um, if we manage to um, allow future generations to have as much fun um, as we do as an industry, but also as yacht owners, um, in a purely sustainable way, I think that would be a good, uh, a good one. Absolutely. Well, the, the definition of sustainability is to truly be able to continue to do something indefinitely. Yes, right? that's so right. So in, in that way, that if the fun and everything can be passed on, yeah, and can be, uh, let's say, enjoyed in the future and the generations to come, then that means we're truly sustainable. Yeah. But it's a sad state of affairs when you are very worried that future generations will not be having the, mm -hmm. the fun and the enjoyment you had. Yeah. Okay, so Enrico, what's your wish for future generations? First of all, I would like to uh, ask the future generation to forgive uh, the previous generations and learn from uh, mistakes that have been made. Do not repeat them. They are smart enough. And I wish them to realize that no one has a crystal ball, but they can make one. Very good one indeed. Fantastic, thank you very much. Here we are, the pledges for future generations. Okay, now before we say goodbye, we want to leave you with our top three most interesting social media finds on things you can do on a boat. Enjoy. Well, thank you very much, all of you. So that's your pledge for uh, future generations. Thank you for a very interesting uh, conversation on a very important topic, of course. Thank you very much for watching. Keep safe and above all, keep yachting. <laughs>